what's kind of the goal for this offseason uh, as far as roster development? Get real close. Come a little closer. A little closer. National championship. Make history. Biggest story in college football. The flavor is no different here in Colorado. You don't know about Coach Bob. Why wouldn't you want to come to Boulder? We've got an unbelievable staff. Coach Prime's here. What we gonna do? This thing is continuing to grow and it gets better every day. The guys that we want to win a national championship with next year embody exactly what we wear around our wrist every day. Smart kids, tough kids, but show a little grit. Fast kids, got to have fast. I need guys that can change the game. If you are a recruit, you want to play in front of these fans. An electric atmosphere here. They're passionate, they're loud, and they're going to always support you. If you want to be a part of a winner, here we are. Behind the scenes, nobody's working as hard as this team. We're about to go and change college football's landscape in 2024. or whatever, but obviously let's get to your season and, and, and put in perspective of what this season was like for you. Your first in Colorado, you inherited a program that went 1-11 before you arrived. You finished 4-8, okay. and eight, but you lost six straight. You lost eight of your last nine games. I know what we look at as you, but I mean, even here, they got you as the 2023 Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year. Congratulations on that. Put it to Thanks. perspective what things are like for you right now and how this season, how oh. would you describe the season? Oh. oh, right now, first of all, it's popping. It's popping because we are recruiting our butts off. Um, last year was a, a year that we had to just fulfill needs and desires and fill a roster because the roster we inherited was atrocious. So we had to fill a roster and then we filled the roster and we got everybody excited when we were excited as well and we instilled hope. But this year is the year... It, of expectation so not hope now we got to translate that to expectation and i expect new things you got to understand when we went to jackson our first spring it was similar it was similar but then that next year we got everything we needed because we assessed the situation evaluated all the players now we know just what we needed and we went out and got it but i'm wondering if there was anything that you could have done differently was there something and if so what was that something um, God, I'm trying to, you know, I'm not lost in words. I'm trying to package this thing correctly so I won't get in trouble. Sure. The process of selection and the process of who you allow into your space, into that locker room, on that staff, in your environment, it could have been more carefully selected. Mm. But without naming names, forget the names, because I know we, we don't want you to do that. But what I'm asking is when you say that you could have been more hands on, you've got to be careful about who you let into that personal space. Right. Could you crystallize for the viewers what kind of damage not doing those things caused you and your program for this first year, your rookie oh. year at Colorado? Oh, my God. Tremendous, because. I'm a personal guy. Stephen, you're a personal guy. We deal in relationships. We're very relational. So if that's not translated from the top, it's never going to make it to the bottom. So that's who I am, what I am, how I am, and that's how I'm going to continue to be. And I got to make sure the kids in that locker room at all costs, with all staff, they come first. And we can relate. We could talk. We could we could understand one another. We could communicate and we could fulfill their their needs intently, not just financially, but just uh, aesthetically, man. Like these kids, they, they need someone to talk to. They need someone to 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 exhaust themselves to. And we got to make sure we have the right people in place so that they could be unapologetically who they are. And, when, I, and I'm going I'm doing a better job with that. I often wondered how difficult that was for you this season, especially considering the fact that your son, the star quarterback, 
was sacked about 56 times for crying out loud. I mean, yeah. I, I, I yeah. mean, what was that like for you as a, a, the, the challenging element of that, watching your son go through what he did, what he went through because you didn't have hogs. I'm not questioning anybody's skill. I'm talking about hogs. Right. I'm talking about the meat potato right. brothers. No, you're right about that. You're yeah. 100%, but you got to understand how I raised him. Right. Like we we always lived affluently. We, we were taken care of because God blessed me and I worked my butt off. But we performed. My kids played in the inner city from day one, from the rip. Mm. Like so they understand everything <laughs> ain't gonna be rosy, everything ain't gonna be one hundred. You're gonna have to work through some adversity in life. And I love that about him. He never once complained about his line, uh, never once complained about the plays, never once complained about anything. He just worked through them. But as a father, you know what's supposed to transpire. You know what's supposed to happen. And let's let's just take the father out of it. Just as the coach, this ain't right. This, it, it, we we better than this. Then then you put in the father element after the game, saying my son had to go in there and get shot up at halftime just to make it through the fourth quarter. This ain't it. We better than this. Mm. No no no. We we better than this. And are y'all forgetting that this is my son? When we putting all this stuff together, are y'all forgetting this is my son? Mm. So sometimes that's the only element of it that happens way after the game, not during the game. He He's my player during the game. After the game, when I'm seeing him limping and in the ice tub and trying to prepare all week physically, and I have to give him a day off every week because his body don't even recover to Wednesday. Well, 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 this has been going around Colorado and college football for about half a season now as to whether or not we were going to see Sean Lewis back as the offensive coordinator in any or in any role, really. And I think everybody knew that it wasn't going to happen. I mean, you can't come as the offensive coordinator to a brand new rebuilt team and then get somewhat demoted in the end of the season and then come back in any other role. So you knew this was going to happen. A lot of schools at that point probably starting to look at Coach Lewis at that point saying, hey, I bet you he'd make a great coach for our university. And it looks like it may have happened. So Pete Thamel of ESPN came out and said that expect tomorrow that on Wednesday that Sean Lewis is going to be named the San Diego State Aztecs new head coach. Colorado Buffalo's coach Nick Williams will be part ways with the team after just one season. Nick Williams was a defensive line coach for the Colorado Buffaloes. Like I said, this one caught me by surprise, guys. It's being reported that. Steve Wilfarm posted on Twitter today here in Colorado Buffalo's defensive end coach Nick Williams is moving on from the program. He is one of the best recruiters in the country and up and corner on the field of Pete State Native. 33-year-old Williams played his college football at Georgia. So, guys, there you have it, man. Nick Williams will be leaving the Colorado Buffaloes. This is a big loss for Coach Prime in the Colorado Buffaloes. Now, we want to talk about this, but, guys, if you lose something, the question is, can you replace it and can you improve it? And that's what we're also going to talk about, all right? It was just announced that defensive coordinator Charles Kelly will be moving on to Auburn. Now let's stop right there. This is a great pickup for Auburn. This is a bad loss, I believe, for Coach Prime. This was something that they both agreed upon. Coach Prime is always for his coaches, making the moves they feel are best for their careers and their family. But the defensive coordinator that is coming in, ooh, buckle up. I got this photograph, Dion, from uh, a gentleman named Warren Sapp, or oh, wow. as it says on his diploma, Warren Carlos Sapp. He sent me this photograph of his diploma. I'm so proud. From Rich, you're going to make me tear up, man, because I'm, I'm so proud of the big fella. You know him and you love him. We, we know him other than how the world know him. And you talk about a huge teddy bear. You talking about a huge teddy bear. He has this huge bravado that's going to scare you off if you allow him to. But deep down, and you don't even have to go that deep. He's he's a teddy bear, man. And to see him go get his diploma, because I know what he wants to do. He wants to coach on his staff, and he wants to be a part of the staff. And he is going to be a part of the staff. But he is unbelievable. The kids love him. 
Oh my God, they love him. When they just see him, the D, when the D linemen see him, they light up like a Christmas tree. And one of the most beautiful sights I've, I've seen was first after practice one day, he was just, he just came here to kick and came here to see me. And he was in the hot tub because, you know, his body still banged up as well. At first, it was one guy. Look down there 30 minutes later, you got the whole defensive line in the hot tub and he's holding court. And he, you know how he's animated like John yeah. Madden. And he's, he's doing all his antics and he has captivated all their attention and they're hanging on to every word. Coach Sanders, back in the news, um, his D-line coach left him and is at Syracuse now with the new head coach that left Nebraska, Coach Brown. <laughs> He's didn't, now you say, didn't, didn't you say earlier when we first heard about Warren Sapp that you said this this coach was a really good coach, like a top-notch D-line coach, yeah? Yes. And now you're, you're going to bring on Warren Sapp, who's never coached yes. or done anything of that. Yes. Interesting. Let me ask you this, though. You went out publicly and said Warren Sapp is coming here, like about four weeks ago. This guy's a, your D line coach right now, so you're saying he's you're fired. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> like there's, uh, there's some crazy stuff that's going on here. Um, Warren Sapp's coming in. Um, we, you know, he's coming for sure. You got this other guy who left, and and now you got this guy's girl leaving him too. Like it seems like Dion's in a little whirlwind of uh, hit a little rough patch here. Uh, everybody seemed to be leaving Dion right now in Colorado. I, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, decommit after decommit. You got coach after coach, uh, player, wifey, Beyonce. <laughs> uh, All I, know is, I will say this. Uh, oftentimes in my personal life, when I went through my deepest and darkest storms, there's light at the end. Yeah, so no I don't doubt. know. No doubt. As Colorado is facing two quarterback decommits during the past month. The first one came from Antoine Hill. He was a four-star recruit in the 2025 class. He was only committed for a month before he pulled his pledge. He originally picked Colorado from a list of 28 offers that included Bama, Florida State, and Georgia. The other decommit came from three-star 2024 quarterback Danny O'Neill, who had previously picked the Buffs over 18 other Power 5 offers. I thought this was interesting. At the time of his commitment, he mentioned his relationship with previous OC Sean Lewis. So, Carl, these two quarterback decommitments, what does that tell you about the health of this Colorado program? It doesn't really say anything to me. Danny O'Neill was a guy that Sean Lewis was really connected to in his relationship relationship with Sean Lewis. Obviously, he, when he decommitted to Colorado, he immediately went to San Diego State. He was a guy that Sean Lewis coveted. I think that it would have said more if he would have transitioned to another Power 5 school, but that group of five was more in his wheelhouse. He's a really good high school quarterback, but he did end up with the guy that he ultimately wanted to be with. From a standpoint of the quarterback in the 25 class, I just think the way that recruiting is right now, with the transfer portal and commitments. That's a very long time away. Most coaches right now are not even really addressing the class of 25. Look at all the flips that we're having today. Look at all of the transfer portal commitments. The transfer portal flips. It's a crazy time right now. This is a special pleasure for us. Joining us now is Jordan Seaton, the number one rated offensive lineman in this year's recruiting class. I'm talking about in the country. We're talking about six feet. What are we going to say? Five, six, five, or six, six? Can I go, go six, 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 six? All right, let's go six, six, 290. Left tackle with a seven foot wingspan known for dominating at IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. So obviously everybody wants this young man who grew up in Washington, D.C. Speculation has run wild the last few days about which school he'll choose. And in just a moment, Jordan Seaton will announce his choice right here Ooh. on Undisputed. You got seven, about seven teams that made your final, yeah. right? How many offers did you collect? You know the offers is the yeah. big thing, right? <laughs> yeah. You know the offers, the box, the whole thing. How many yeah. did you collect? Uh, I stopped counting after 45, 50. <laughs> I think I had every school besides, Everybody. um, Harvard. <laughs> every school besides Harvard. Well, yeah. 
Hey, I mean, uh, Harvard yeah. would take you if you want. In a heartbeat. They, they you would too. Harvard would take you and the homeboys from DC hey. just to get you. I got the grades too now. Yeah. Right. I, I believe it. Go, right. Michael. Hey, hey. Yeah. Jordan, 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 we straighten that out just to make sure they <laughs> clarify. You know what I mean? Let them know yeah. you got the grades to get there also. We Jordan, got the grades. Help, to get help there. me bring you. Right. Help me bring you to this NFL audience, Jordan. Who would you say, what current player now in the National Football League that you most model mimic your game after? Um, I like to model my game after Trent Williams. I knew he was going to oh. say it. I knew he was going to oh. say it. Oh. I knew he was going to say right it. Now. You got to understand. That's he a dog. The, That's a dog. He got the swag off the field, but on the field, he's mean and nasty. Yes. So I like to keep my uh, demeanor the same way. Okay. Enough has been said. The time has come. Jordan Seaton, next year you will attend dot, 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 which school? First off, I would like to thank God, my family, everybody who's been in this recruiting process for me. You know, it's been a long one, not an easy one, but those who've been with me and stuck with me, seeing how we persevere when times get hardest. But for the next three to four years, uh oh. What's in the bag seat? What's in the bag seat? I'll be Wait going a minute. to. Wait a minute. The University ah! of Colorado. Oh! Ah! I told you. He's a Buffalo. Mm. Mm. Coach oh! Ryan. Oh! Oh! Somewhere Shadur is oh! doing a handstands. Oh! Man. Coach Prime said two days wow. ago, we will make the playoffs next year. Now it's expanded to 12 wow. teams, Big 12, where you'll yes. be playing. Wow. But your choice right now makes me wow. believe you are going to be a playoff team next year. Yeah, you got to believe in Coach Prime. Wow. You know, have an opportunity to play with somebody who done it at the highest level, gold highest. jacket level. Um, many, very few can say they did that. You know, I got... Two Heisman candidates, you know, Shadir Sanders, Travis Hunter. You do. They're amazing. You know how they go. Um, yeah, man, and if you ain't rocking with us and you say you're a dog, and you, you claim you're a dog, why are you not coming to Colorado? There you go. Why are you not helping you're somebody crazy. who look like you? We got, we got news. We got breaking news. Nick breaking news, if you will. So, we got to go to the man, the myth, the legend, the aficionado, on all things recruiting, national recruiting analyst for us here at On3, Josh Newberg. Josh, five-star Jordan Seaton from IMG Academy, offensive tackle. It was, you know, there was uh, Alabama in the mix, Tennessee in the mix. Ends up giving his commitment to Coach Prime in Colorado. Just immediate reaction, immediate thoughts on this, uh, this pledge for Coach Prime. Coach Prime told you. He said, at the end of the season, I'm going to go get me an offensive line, and he just did that. Not only is Jordan Seaton a five-star, he is the number one offensive tackle in America, the only top 10 uncommitted offensive lineman still available. So Coach Prime goes out and just destroys the competition. Look, I'm still in shock right now because we thought last night it sounded like Tennessee. We thought coming off of the Ohio State visit, we thought Ohio State had a great shot at landing Jordan Seaton. O Oregon. Oregon was the dream school. Jordan Seaton said it himself right here in the On3 studio. He said, Oregon is my dream school. He went out to Eugene, but it's Colorado in the end. And you got to think back to how did this happen? Well, Coach Sanders was able to get Jordan Seaton on campus twice during the season. And I think those visits were huge. Deion Sanders doing what he told us he was going to do. Go to the portal, get some new offensive linemen, try and fortify the line of scrimmage a little bit, build the trenches a little bit. Is this sort of, you know, the, the fix? Is this all we need to see now from Dion going to the portal and adding some offensive linemen? Also got Jordan Seaton to commit from the high school ranks, a five-star from IMG. That's a big deal. Shouldn't look past that. Are the happy days back in Colorado? Uh, uh, uh. I'm still alive. 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 There's definitely been holiday season for Colorado. If you're in Colorado, it's been holiday season. Uh, today, you had LSU commit transfer over to Colorado. 
He was the number one player in 2022 in the state of Louisiana, so that should be huge. A big defense alignment there and since this is the pass rush podcast i'm just thrilled to see what he does uh next year if he could just you know be another jordan dominic out there or better I, I, that's a win that's definitely a win for colorado then when you move on to uh tcu transfer big wide receiver and colorado needed that they had a lot of skilled wide receivers antonio was the only like big one but now you got more and then with that type of depth you give Travis Hunter so much leeway, right? You give him so much leeway to play a defensive series and then chill on offense and or he play offense and chill on defense because on defense, they just had a transfer from Liberty. One of their starting corners transferred over to Colorado, two interceptions last year, 40 plus tackles. That's big for depth there. Uh, and if you can help push Cormani to the five star that he was you know, said to be, that that gives gives you so much leeway so many different packages and stuff that you could do all right thanks i love you man Bye. i got my mtv out savage i'm a savage oh i'm a savage whatever i want i'm going to get whatever i want i have to get what's up everybody it's at uh in just one moment we are going to talk about the shocker of the day as Jordan Seaton, the five-star offensive tackle that just a few weeks ago to, committed to Colorado on national TV, he might be going somewhere else. A shocker of all shockers, even here on National Signing Day. Well, it looks like some rumbles that have been going on is that a secret visit was taken to the University of Maryland. Um, now, of course, this young man is from D.C. He was playing at IMG Academy, but he is naturally from D.C. Now, the University of Maryland coach Mike Loxley has been recruiting Jordan for a long time for four years he's been trying to land this young man where it looks like he has received a crystal ball to maryland now that crystal ball was by jeff ehrman he's not a lead expert he is an expert so it's not like he's been phoned but he has gotten a crystal ball now he's an insider for maryland sports so of course i know he wants him to definitely come to maryland he's crystal balled him we'll see exactly what it transpire Salute, salute. Now, Jordan Seaton has officially revealed a photo on his Insta story and as well as Twitter that has a lot of people speculating what's really going on. Will he really sign with Coach Prime or will he be flipped on National Signing Day? Could Maryland flip five star Jordan Seaton? You said what? This uh this is your first official day, your first 24 hours is official Colorado buff, bro. How, how's the feeling? Man, it's feeling good, man. Look where we at. We got a good view. Yeah. I get to play for the best coach. Yeah. I get to do with my brothers, man. So we thought you wasn't coming, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was a lot. It was a lot hey. of speculation out hey, there. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Listen, <laughs> man. My word means something, man. Not for sure. Don't believe the hype. No, Don't believe what sure. you see on TV. Yeah. What's your relationship with your coaches? You know, my relationship with the coaches is great. You know, we could talk just anything other than football. You know, I look at Prime as like, you know, like another uncle. You know, if you're one of us, you're always good, you know? What's up? So, Coach Prime on Stephen A talking about you. You know what I'm saying? How how's that just feel? The Hall of Famer saying you different, your mindset different, your mentality different. Like, how's it feel just hearing that type of stuff? Just walk and talk. It's different, you know? Like, being able to have that much pressure on you and you know, a man who believes in your craft and believes in your game like that, it's different when you battle yourself. Like, it's just so much different. So, like, everything that he says, it just means a little bit more because I'm betting on him and he's betting on me to come in and do what I do. Yeah. So. What's your relationship with Shador? Shit. What they say? A1 since day one type. One of them ones. Yeah, you know, people thought since he tweeted that. 
Like, man, if you ain't with us, then move around. Like, <laughs> you know, people, you know, it, it was crazy out here. You know, we had, we had this joint calculated to a T, so don't believe the hype, but we are the hype. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> and again. Yeah. I told you we gon' win. win. Got them dudes to block. Hmm. They some cold shocks. Hmm. They gon' block for my baby. Hmm. Ooh, he gon' have a lady. Woo. First round, first pick. Hmm. You know how we ain't slick. Hmm. Don't forget about that boy Shiloh. Yeah. Put it on the <laughs> yeah. with the yeah, yeah, yeah. How you feel right now? You're blessed and highly favored. You don't see all that. You see the wins, the losses, the commercials. All right. The good, the bad, the ugly. You don't see all that. You don't see me in a van taking my kids hour and a half across town to the inner city of Dallas for a truth organization to practice every day on time, setting up the field before the kids got to and you doubt my hoodness. <laughs> you doubt me keeping it 100. Half of y'all I was giving before y'all was living. Hmm. I was doing it before y'all was misconstruing it. Hmm. I was doing it before y'all was misconstruing it. I want to slow that down so you can get it. Gee. I was stunned with it before y'all was blunt with it. Yeah. <laughs> I was blessing them before y'all was stressing them. Huh. I've been appreciating it well before y'all was hating it. Yeah. I've been walking this walk well before y'all was talking this talk. Mm. I was rich. Well before y'all became oh, a daddy. Hold on now. Okay, all right then. Yeah, hold on now. I like it though. I like it. <laughs> Hope our kids getting ready. I'm getting ready for them before they get ready for me. I'm getting ready for them to come in and work. Well before they get ready for me. Oh, but I sink the room.